The Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has come to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 54th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 24th and final council meeting of 2021. Tonight's agenda is 39, 35 pages long, involving 89 pieces of legislation. That includes 33 resolutions, eight first reading bills, 11 second reading pieces of legislation, and 37 ordinances on third and final reading. On the agenda, there are four appointments tonight to boards and commissions, including two for the Special Solid Waste and Recycling Commission, Community Corrections Co um, Advisory Commission, and the Solid Waste Management Commission, although those final two uh, spots are, have been withdrawn by the Cooper administration during the committee meeting prior to the vice council meeting. But I'll also say before we get into what's going on uh, overall with the council agenda tonight, we have a treat for the invocation night. The Fairfield Four will be singing the invocation. They sang some during the uh, committee meeting before this session. Uh, Fairfield Ford is worldwide and renowned. They're celebrating their 100th anniversary as an organization, and so they'll be singing the invocation night when we start the meeting. I might also remind you that even with the spread and number of, of COVID-19 cases in Na Nashville continuing to rise, especially with the new highly contagious Omicron variant, which is already in Nashville and across Tennessee. The state law has stripped the Metro Health Board from the power to be able to continue a mask mandate in all city buildings. Therefore, wearing a mask here tonight are recommended but not required. There are, again, several resolutions on the council agenda tonight to appropriate American Rescue Funds. One is R RS 2021-1260. It originally would allocate $20.2 million for affordable housing. $10 million of that would go to the city's barn fund. $10 million to establish a catalyst fund for affordable housing purchases and $200,000 to create a centralized database for affordable housing. With the approval of Mayor John Cooper and the Oversight Committee that, that uh, reviews the allocation of the use of American Rescue Funds monies, the $20.2 the $20 million will be doubled now to, by amendment to the Council tonight uh, to this resolution of, to up to $40.2 million. The resolution now has 25 sponsors. Additional monies will go for additional funds for groups to provide new affordable housing through the Barnes Fund. RS 2021-1263 would allocate $9 million in rescue funds to expand the vehicle fleet of the Metro Nashville Police Department, the Nashville, the Nashville Department of Transportation, and the Davidson County Sheriff's Office. There's another resolution, RS 2021-1278, appropriating $4 million from another city fund to buy vehicles to purchase practically 83 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Vehicles to replace vehicles that are out of service or do not meet utilization standards for age or mileage. Resolution also includes 50 other vehicles for the Metro Police Department, 21 vehicles for the Davidson County Sheriff's Office, and nine vehicles for the Parks Police, and three vehicles for the Nashville Fire Department. Because of duplications of the departments in those various resolutions, and the fact that vehicles are normally purchased through the city's 4% reserve fund for equipment, there could be some questions and uh, comments about that tonight on the night when it comes up on the council floor. Also on the agenda tonight is RS 2021. 1279 would appropriate $11 million, in a, f taking the money from a 4% request for various rep uh, repairs and equipment purchases for city departments, which is normally how uh, equipment is normally bought by the city. One resolution to watch tonight involves American Rescue Funds is, is RS 2021-1303. It requests the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee to recommend to the council the appropriation of not less than $70 million to the Mayor's Office of Economic and Community Development for economic development areas in disadvantaged communities with particular emphasis on Bordeaux and North Nashville and for the funding of Nashville's Small Business Recovery Fund. This would be the largest allocation so far of rescue funds if it's recommended and approved by the council. Well, note with resolution tonight include RS 2021-1282 that would allocate nearly $5 million in the direct appropriation from the state. It's for non-recurring flood recovery expenses, including home buyouts, purchasing heavy equipment and trash trucks, debris removal, and other cleanup activities. In a separate resolution, RS 2021-1284, we accept another million-dollar grant from the state to demolish seven houses located in various floodways and floodplains in Davidson County. For the resolutions, RS 2021, 1286, and 1287 would accept state grants to deal with serious health issues. 1286 would allocate $737,000 to build local capacity to improve public health response to substance misabuse, that epidemic of substance abuse. 1287 would allocate an extra $6 million to promote the proper use of all recommended vaccines and respond to vaccine preventable diseases in collaboration with the CDC and other partners. On first reading tonight is BL 2021-1052. This is the redistricting proposal for the city, from the city's planning commission. It regards all 35 metro council districts and the nine school board positions. All this in light of the 2020 census. The council can either accept or reject this plan. It cannot amend it. 
council, the commission staff has worked with the council through three versions of this plan before it was actually submitted to the council. So this issue, if for some reason the council did reject it, the matter would then go to a referendum and perhaps the council could even add its own plan. That's not expected to happen, but that is the way the process is working. On second reading, the council will also be asked to approve the use of license plate scanners by Metro Police. The council has deadlocked for months on such bills, and Vice Mayor Jim Schulman has offered his help to help mediate the matter. Having gotten that far so far, although there are three amendments before the council tonight, we understand this bill will be deferred until at least the second meeting in January. Uh, that's uh, the, the other problem that has come with the other issue, the development that's happened in this in the last 24 hours is that the city's community oversight board has come out against any kind of bills involving um, license plate readers. There are concerns about this have been raised on the council floor as well about this possibly leading to more racial profiling. Uh, also on second reading tonight, the council will, uh, um, BL 2021 would limit the uh, tourist, BL 2021 1010 would limit tourist transportation vehicles from operating only in certain areas of downtown and only in, uh, and away from any schools in that area. Bills on third reading tonight will also include uh, bills to set up uh, his BL 2021-1011 would seek to set up a permit system to bring, to serve or bring your own beer on downtown tourist facilities. The law was passed by the council a few weeks ago, barring any alcohol and the unenclosed tourist vehicles beginning December 1st. Owners of these entertainment vehicles claim they are now losing money. The new bill seeks to address that issue and final approval of the bill by the council would mark the beginning of the end for that dry period for these uh, vehicles. The bill would also have a second substitute before tonight, so we'll see what other changes need to be made before the bill gets its final approval tonight, if it does. Also on third reading, BL 2021-1016 seeks to name the courthouse steps in Plaza in honor of Nashville civil rights icon Diane Nash. Reporters wanted to name the entire park in front of the courthouse for Nash, but the Metro Parks Board declined to do that because it has a longstanding policy not to name parks after living persons. Council members feel it's important to honor Nash while she's still living. They believe the courthouse steps in the plaza are appropriate because it was on that site in the early 1960s that Nash got then Nashville Mayor Ben West to admit it was wrong to segregate downtown lunch counters. Shortly after that, those counters began to serve people of all colors, ending several months of student sit-ins downtown. Finally, on third reading tonight, the council, uh, BL 2021, 1018 will allow the Metro Police to work with the National Lights Out Company to provide bulb repair vouchers that officers can distribute at their discretion in lieu of traffic citations for people who have lights out on their car. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and the staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website in the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Schulman. You'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting to order shortly. So will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, December 21st, 2021, our last full meeting before Christmas and our last full meeting of the year. Here is wishing everyone the best for the holiday season and a happy and healthy new year. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is brought to us by guests of council member Nancy Van Rees. We've got Joseph Thompson, Lavert Allison, Bobby Sherrill, and Larice Bird, members of the Fairfield Four, celebrating their 100th anniversary of singing. We'll sing the Christmas song tonight, When Was Jesus Born? Ladies and gentlemen, the Fairfield Four. Yeah. To lean on that. You need to get close. I, I get close. Okay. Tell me when was Jesus born? You know it was the last month, month of the year. year. Whoa, oh, when was Jesus born? I said it was the last month of the year. Now tell me when was Jesus born? You know it was the last month of the year. Now was it January? No, no. February? No. March, April, May, ha, 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 
June, July, August, September, October, no. November was the 25th day of December was the last month of the year. You know we were the last month of the year. Oh, when was Jesus born? You know we were the last month of the year. Now tell me when was Jesus born? I said it was the last month of the year. Now was it January? No, no. February? March, April, May, ha, 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 June, July, August, September, October, no, November was the 25th day of December was the last month of the year, born of a virgin, and he was wrapped in swamp, talking about God, he was lying in a manger, now was it January, February, March, April, May, ha, 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 June, July, August, September, October, no, November was the 25th day of December was the last month of the year. You know we were the last month of the year. Oh, when was Jesus? You know we were the last month of the year. Now tell me when was Jesus born? I said it was the last month of the year. Now was it January? No, no. February, March, April, May, ha, 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 June, July, August, September, October, no, November was the 25th day of December was the last month of the year. God called Moses on the mountain top, and then he stamped it down into Moses, ha, ha. Month of the year. Oh, when was Jesus born? I said it was the last month of the year. Now tell me when was Jesus born? You know it was the last month of the year. Now was it January? No, February. March, April, May, ha, 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 June, July, August, September, October, no, November was the 25th day of December was the last month of the Yeah. Uh, we we would like for you all to come back to the next meeting if you don't mind. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow. So you may be seated. Uh, with that objection, we will suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from December 7, 2021? I've got a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? Okay. All right, so a few notes before we get started. Um, uh, since our last meeting, um, Tornadoes uh, obviously hit our area again, uh, ripped through various parts of this country, uh, including Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, our thoughts uh, and prayers go out to the people of those areas impacted, and especially to those families that lost loved ones during the storms. Um, I do want to recognize uh, two members of our staff tonight. Most of you know that our clerk, Elizabeth Waits, will be leaving us at the end of this month. Uh, we wish her all the best in her future endeavors and want to thank her for all her service to the city. And uh, although she's not going any anywhere, we need to thank Hannah Zeitlin, who has served us so well for the past six months in her role as the interim council director.
right. Um, I do want to mention um, one other thing. So our own um, uh, Council Member Glover is going to be having some surgery next week. And uh, we will be thinking about you and wishing you all the best. And um, we hope everything goes well. So anyway, we're all going to be thinking about you. Um, Council Member Murphy, um, I'm calling on you. Um, uh, you were the one who uh, sent out the message about the ugly sweater uh, contest or whatever. And I've seen some pretty ugly sweaters. I'm not sure if they're even tied to Christmas, but they're pretty ugly. So Council Member Murphy, you are recognized. Um, I think that we need to continue to see a performance throughout the meeting tonight before that before a, a final judgment is made and the, the, the ballots will be counted. Um, I know that there is very little competition that can that can be in the same category as Councilman Young, but I really expect all of you to step it up over the course of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Young, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, though, uh, for, for what purpose do I arise? I was just stretching. <laughs> you were just stretching before? Yeah, yawning, stretching. I was, you know, sometimes my colleague, Councilmember Murphy, can tend to be a little uh, boring. So I was just yawning, stretching, you know. All right. I, I think we have a disqualification, so the rest of you are back in the running. <laughs> uh, Councilmember Young, you may be seated. Please don't stand up anymore. <laughs> All right, Council Member uh, Vircher, we are now ready to proceed to elections and confirmations. Um, Council Member Vircher, uh, is there a report from the Rules Committee? Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. There is. <clears throat> so we have uh, the Community Corrections Advisory Board appointment of Ms. Anna Flores for a term expiring August 31st, 2023. Uh, we recommended approval, 8 4 and zero against. Uh, we also had uh, the Stormwater Management Committee appointment of Mr. Jay Fulmer for a term expiring October 31st, 2025. Uh, the Rules Committee recommended approval 840 against. And for a special Solid Waste and Recycling Commission appointment of Ms. Jennifer Hackett and also for Mr. Brian Weems, those were withdrawn, Vice Mayor. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Council Member Virtue. What I've got is um, we've got two up for tonight. The appointment of Ms. Jennifer Hackett and Mr. Brian Reams were both withdrawn, correct? Correct. Okay. And Ms. Anna Flores is standing up? She is. And Mr. Jay Fulmer is standing up right there? Um, so, Vice uh, Mayor, they stayed. They said they wanted to see you. They wanted to see me? Uh, I thought they were going to sing, <laughs> so I wasn't quite sure. So, uh, Council Member Vircher, um, they're also not wearing ugly sweaters, so they're not really going to be recognized. Council Member Virtue, can I get a motion on the on the two appointments? Absolutely, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion on Ms. Anna Flores and Mr. Jay Former, properly seconded. Any discussion on the appointments? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the two appointments, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt, Ms. Flores, Mr. Former. Thank you for agreeing to serve. Uh, we very much appreciate it on behalf of the city. Thank you very much. Uh, please recognize them and let us show thanks. So, uh, Ms. Flores, uh, Mr. Fulmer, you are welcome to stay or you can leave, okay? <laughs> but we will be watching the door if you're leaving, all right? All right, um, Council Member Vircher, um, I know there is a rule for review in the packet. Uh, did the Rules Committee actually look at the rule tonight? Yes, Vice Mayor, the rules, we did uh, discuss it at length, um, and we referred, uh, deferred for two meetings. Okay. All right, um, Council Member Evans, this is your rule request. Uh, do you want to say anything tonight about the rule? You're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, so the reason why I was interested in bringing this rule forward uh, for the council to consider is because during our first two years of our term, we've had a very weird first two years, um, but we have had, I would define it as limited real community engagement. And I say that meaning no disrespect to the attempts that we made via Zoom and in other avenues. Um, but oftentimes when it comes to countywide issues, we're having district-wide communication, but we're not necessarily having communication where there is a presence in front of the whole council body so license plate readers, for example, 
have been kind of a polarizing conversation. We did have a public hearing at the library um, that ultimately probably should have been held here in the council chamber going through this process. But because 27 people, it's a pretty big lift uh, to get people to engage and, and wanna have that kind of hearing in front of all of us. So really that's the, the goal is to look at how we can better engage over the last two years of our term. There was some good feedback in the rules committee. I'll take that into, into consideration. There's some other information that has been requested of Ms. Eitlin. And so we'll come back and, and see, you know, if we wanna move it or not. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, council member. So uh, council member Virtue, it looks like it's been moved. Um, it wasn't officially acted upon. It's gonna come back in two meetings. Is correct, correct, Vice Mayor, two okay. meetings. All right, so two meetings. Um, for um, members of the council, uh, it's the first item in your amendment packet. Go ahead and take a look at it, and then it will be considered uh, in two meetings. Uh, we're ready to move on. On um, uh, We do have a public comment period, but we have no one who actually signed up to speak tonight, so uh, we will proceed ahead. Uh, we're now ready for resolutions on public hearing. We have one up tonight. Uh, here's how this is going to work. Call up the resolution, refer to the sponsor. Sponsor is uh, Council Member Parker. Uh, unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, sponsor will call for a public hearing. Ask for a show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. Ask for a show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. If anybody in favor wishes to speak, come to that back microphone, introduce yourself, give us your address. You'll have two minutes in which to speak. Then ask if anybody opposed wishes to speak as well. After that process, we'll close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. So we are ready for the measure. It's item number one on the calendar. It's on page two. RS 2021-1275 by Council Member Parker. It's a resolution exempting Southern Grist, located at 750 and 754 Douglas Avenue, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit pursuant to section 7.08.090E of the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this resolution. Anybody here in favor of the resolution? Okay. Show of hands of anybody here in opposition to the resolution. I see no hands either way. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Member Parker, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Okay, let me get a, I think there's a committee report oh, out you. there. Government Operations. Council Member Hancock, you're recognized. Government operations voted six in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council member, Council member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, yes, I'd like to um, renew my motion to uh, approve with a brief explanation. So this is Southern Grist's new uh, tap room on Douglas Avenue. We actually already passed a resolution um, exempting them from the distance waiver, but the address was incorrect. So appreciate them for just refiling that and getting the correct addresses on there. Um, it is open now, so if y'all would like to come check it out in District 5, uh, Southern Grist's new tap room at 750 and 754 Douglas Avenue, uh, please do. We'd, be, we'd love to have you, and um, with that, I'll renew my motion to approve. All right, you've heard the motion to approve RS 2021-1275, proper motion, proper second. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. Thank you, Council Member Parker. We are now on consent resolutions and resolutions. Uh, and we have a number of them up. All right, so uh, stay with me. Uh, we'll go through this. Uh, and if you see something that needs to be bumped, let me know. Um, the first one on consent is item number five. It's RS 2021 1276. 1277 is on consent. 1278 is on consent. 1279 on consent. 1280 on consent. 1281 on consent. 1282 on consent. 1283 on consent. 1284 on consent. 1285 on consent. 1286 on consent, 1287 on consent, 1288 on consent, 1289 on consent, 1290 on consent, 1291 on consent, 1292 on consent, 
1293 on consent, 1294 on consent, 1295 on consent, 1296 on consent, 1297 on consent, 1298 on consent, 1299 on consent, 1300 on consent, 1301 on consent, 1302 on consent, 1304 on consent. <clears throat> so basically, it looks like um, except for 1303 and then the first five, one, two, I'm sorry, the first one, two, three on um, the calendar, uh, those, everything else was on consent. Councilmember O'Connell, you recognized. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Can we pull 1296, item 25? Yeah. Item 25, uh, RS 2021 1296, uh, is off of consent. Anything else needs to be pulled off? Anything else? Okay. Here we go, I'm gonna read through that. Um, uh, the first item I've got on consent is RS 2021-1276 by Allen and Welsh. Resolution appropriating a total of $100,000 from a certain account at the General Fund of the General Services District to the Center for Nonprofit Management selected to receive public safety violence reduction pilot grant funds. RS 2021-1277 by Council Member Allen. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law compromise and settle the personal injury claims of Devon and Rich Jinks against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $70,000. Amount to be paid from the self-insured liability fund, RS 2021-1278. Allen and Stiles, a resolution appropriating the amount of $4 million from the General Services Office of Fleet Management undesignated fund balance for the purchase of vehicles for various departments, RS 2021-1279 by Council Member Allen. Resolution appropriating the amount of $11,427,500 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metropolitan Government. RS 2021-1280, Council Member Allen. Resolution authorizing providing for the issuance and sale of water and sewer revenue bond anticipation notes, principal amount not to exceed $200 million at any one time in the form of commercial paper uh, for uh, Nashville and Davidson County. Authorizing providing for one or more dealer agreements, issuing and paying agency agreements and credit facility agreements. RS 2021-1281 by Council Member Allen. It's a resolution amending resolution number RS 2015-1417 as supplemented and amended. Increase the size of water and sewer revenue extendable commercial paper programs to the Metropolitan Government from a maximum aggregate principal amount not to exceed 100 million to a maximum aggregate principal amount not to exceed 200 million. RS 2021-1282, Council Members Allen and Young, a resolution determining a plan for expenditure of a direct appropriation of grant from the state of Tennessee in the amount of $5 million. RS 2021-1283, that's item 12, Council Member Allen, Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle, settle uh, the property damage claim against uh, BOP Nest Nashville LLC, Cambridge uh, Swinnerton Inc., Hayward Baker Inc., and Keller North America Inc. in the amount of $128,570.12. Uh, that comes to that amount to be paid to the Water and Sewer GSD Stormwater Capital Projects Fund. RS 2021-1284, Allen Withers and others, resolution accepting a hazard mitigation grant from the state of Tennessee Department of Military, TEMA, to the Metropolitan Government uh, through the Department of Water and Sewer Services, authorizing the acquisition demolition of seven houses located in various floodways and floodplains in Davidson County. <coughs> uh, that's Council Member Allen Withers and others. Item number 14, RS 2021-1285 by Allen Hancock and Stiles, resolution adopting a fee schedule associated with the processing and review of appeals made to the Short-Term Appeals Rental Board. RS 2021-1286 by Allen Evans and Welsh, resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health to build local capacity to improve public health response to the substance misuse epidemic in the Middle Tennessee high impact area. RS 2021-1287, Allen uh, Evans and others, resolution approving amendment three to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to promote the proper use of all recommended vaccines and respond to vaccine preventable diseases in collaboration with the CDC and other partners. RS 2021-1288, Allen Evans and Welsh, resolution approving amendment six to a contract between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Vanderbilt University acting through the School of Medicine 
to participate as a member site in the CDC Tuberculosis Trials Consortium Studies, RS 2021-1289, Alan Evans and others. Resolution accepting a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control of the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health, provide funding for a foster program for shelter animals. RS 2021-1290, that's item number 19, Allen, Bradford, Welsh, and Suara. Resolution accepting an American Rescue Plan Act grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metropolitan Government through the Nashville Public Library to upgrade the Limitless Library's website, foster educational attainment and equity by providing public library materials and services. RS 2021-1291, Allen, Bradford, and others. Resolution approving amendments to contract number L4795, a grant between uh, D-Y-M-O-N, In the Rough, Inc., and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, and contract number L-4804, a grant contract between Nations Ministry Center and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville uh, and Davidson County for the provision of free and high-quality after-school programs to the Nashville After Zone Alliance. RS-2021-1292, Allen and Young, resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Womble uh, LLC for the provision of heavy metal, metal heavy equipment rentals and associated equipment rental services. RS 2021-1293, it's item number 22, Bradford, Syracuse, and others. Resolution amending RS 2021-1222 to correct the estimated completion date for the construction of a complete street on SR1. It's US 41 Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro Road from I-24 ramp to Foothill Drive. RS 2021-1294 by Council Member Allen. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Annette and Mark uh, Buscemi against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $9,500. RS 2021-1295, item number 24, Allen, Bradford, Welsh, and others. Resolution accepting a child and adult care food program grant from the Tennessee Department of Human Services uh, to the Metropolitan Government through the uh, Parks and Recreation Department to provide nutritious meals and snacks for children attending after school programs in nine park locations. Item number 26, RS 2021-1297 by Council Member Allen. Resolution authorized the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle a property damage claim of Embassy Suites by Hilton against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $15,229. RS-2021-1298, Allen and Evans, a resolution approving an application for a hazardous materials emergency preparedness grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metropolitan Government through OEM to provide resources to procure items, training, and or equipment for hazardous materials uh, pr preparedness. RS-2021-1299, Allen, Evans, and Suara, resolution approving an application for an emergency management performance grant from the state of Tennessee. Uh, through TEMA to the Metropolitan Government through OEM to subsidize the emergency management program. RS 2021-1300, Allen, Evans, Warren, Stiles. Resolution approving an application for a Tennessee Safe Courts grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration to the Metropolitan Government through the Office of Family Safety to update the Gene Crow Advocacy Center to increase storage space and repaint client and child high traffic areas. RS 2021-1301, uh, that's item number 30, Alan Welsh and Suara. Resolution approving an application for a coordinated entry CE grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Social Services Department to fund the position of a coordinated entry special project coordinator to help strengthen access to coordinated entry for individuals. RS 2021-1302, Alan Welsh and Suara. Resolution approving an application for an HMIS development support grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to the Metro Social Services Commission, Homeless Impact Division to pay for software and ongoing staff education. RS 2021-1304 by Councilmember Murphy. Resolution recognizing the Metro Public Health Department's national accredi accreditation by the Public Health Accreditation Board. And that is it. Um, did, uh, does anything else need to be taken off of consent? All right, seeing none, those are the resolutions on consent. We have lots of uh, committee reports in. Let's start with uh, Council Member Allen. You get to go first. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance considered these resolutions and approved them with various numbers for and against. So let me make sure I do this right. Uh, RS 2021 1276, 1277, 1278, 1279, 12. Okay, those were all 12 in favor, zero against. Okay. 1280 uh, was 11 in favor, zero against. 1281, 1282, 1283, and 1284, and 1285, 1286, 1287, 1288, 1289 were 12 in favor, zero against. RS 2021-1290 was 11 in favor, zero against. RS 2021-1291 
was nine in favor, zero against. RS 20, 21, 1292, 1294, 1295, 1296, 1297, 1298, 1299. That may be it. And 1300, 1301, 1302, 130, oops, were 12 in favor, zero against, and 1303 was not on consent. So that's I believe correct. that's all of them. You got them. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councilmember Hancock, Government Operations. We considered RS 2021-1285 and voted seven in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Welsh, uh, Human Services. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Human Services um, discussed uh, RS 2021 1301 and 1302 and approved both 6 4 0 against. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Weathers, uh, Planning and Zoning. Oh, Councilmember Rutherford. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, planning and Zoning considered. 1284 and 1293, voting nine in favor, zero against on both. All right, thank you. Um, who has got uh, public facilities tonight? Oh, Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, Vice Chair in the House. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we considered 1290, uh, 1291 and 1295 and voted uh, six in favor and zero against on all three. All right, thank you. Councilmember Evans, Public Health and Safety. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Public Health and Safety uh, considered 1263, 1286, 1287, 1288, 1289, 1296, 1298, 1299, and 1300. And we uh, approved uh, nine in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, transportation infrastructure, Council Member uh, Ugly Sweater, I mean Council Member Young. Thank you, Santa Claus. Yeah. We uh, heard resolutions 1284, 1292, and 1293 and voted nine in favor, zero against to recommend. Thank you, Santa. Do you need a motion for uh, Christmas? Not, not yet. All right. Do we have one? Did you mention 1282? You may have. I just want you to stand up again. Ah, I did not mention 1282, but I will now. Okay. Um, it was uh, recommended to approve uh, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, uh, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Virtue, you got one. Which one? <laughs> I think it's the last one. <laughs> I think it's 1304. I got the hooch back here, Vice Mayor. Which, Council which member one? 1304. Oh, 1304? Council member, uh, bill number 1304. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, we'll have to explain that to the new timers later. Okay. Um, uh, rules and commissions recommended approval, uh, 840 against. All right, and can I have a motion to approve all those? Absolutely, Vice Mayor. I move for approval all items on the consent agenda. All right. Uh, so Councilman Virtue has moved to approval. Uh, Councilman Young with the ugly sweater uh, seconds. Uh, any discussion on the motion to approve? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right. So now we're going to take up, I believe we have six items that were not on consent. Um, the first one is... Uh, item number two, it's RS 2021 1252 by Councilmember Hall. It's a resolution encouraging recycling efforts in Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County, requesting the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services incentivize recycling efforts. Councilmember Hall, you're recognized. Commander, report, please. All right, I've got transportation. Councilmember Young. Thank you, Santa. We voted to defer to the first meeting in February, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Hall, you're recognized. Move to defer to the first meeting in February, please. Okay, I uh, got a motion to defer to the first meeting in February, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, uh, motion is to defer to the first meeting in February. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, the next one is RS 2021-1260 by Councilmember Sepulveda, Johnson, Gamble, and others. It's a resolution appropriating $20,200,000 uh, in um, 
American Rescue Plan Act funds from Fund 30216 to supplement the Barnes Fund, to establish a catalyst fund for affordable housing purchases, and to create a centralized database of subsidized housing. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports. Uh, affordable housing, Council Member Parker. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Affordable housing um, voted 840 against the bill or the resolution as substituted. Okay. Thank you. And Council Member Allen, you've got budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval as substituted, 11 in favor and one against. Okay. All right. Um, Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd ask if we could recognize Council Member Sledge so he could move his substitute. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized on the uh, substitute resolution. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you to the bill sponsor. I'll move my substitute with a brief explanation. All right, so I got a motion on the substitute resolution, properly seconded back to you. Thank you. Uh, we've discussed this in committees and I think previously, but just to explain for the viewing audience, the substitute will double the amount that we place toward the Barnes Fund and the Catalyst Fund from the original from 20 million to 40 million and we'll maintain the 200,000 um, for the database that's being developed. I really wanna thank um, all the members who have signed on for supporting the substitute, the administration for supporting it and for advocates who've um, been working on this for well before the substitute came forward. Um, I came before the ARP committee with this request and they unanimously endorsed it. I came before the Housing Trust Fund Commission as well and they too support it. Um, and, as I told the ARP committee and as they repeated back to me, if we're gonna go for housing in this city, we gotta go big and we gotta go now. Um, and so by doubling this fund, we'll ensure a robust spring funding round for Barnes and uh, that will ensure that people know we'll have a, enough time to get the word out um, so that developers know. Um, that in fact, in the commission, um, the, the commission asked people in the audience if we put this funding toward uh, use who would be applying and about 10 hands went up. So um, the demand is there. We know the demand is there for housing. Um, by doing this um, in a way that both funds from a grant perspective where we're at now a 12 to one leverage point for the Barnes Fund for private funding and by doing this Catalyst Fund, which is a, a fantastic bridge or strike fund as it's been called to enable us to compete um, in a hot housing market to ensure that we are uh, thinking about geographic diversity in our county to ensure that people can afford to live everywhere in Davidson County. Um, I think this is the right one-two combination. Um, and I, again, I do want to uh, thank all uh, my colleagues who've expressed their support. Uh, this leads us into 2022 with a fantastic opportunity the work will not be done, the work will be beginning um, or the work will be continuing in many ways, um, but we will be starting the new year on uh, on the right foot when it comes to affordable housing in our city. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, so Council Member Sledge has moved the substitute resolution. Council Member Sepulveda uh, seconds that. Um, discussion on the substitute resolution. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the substitute resolution say aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. Okay, so I've got uh, two no's. Councilmember Glover, Councilmember Swope, any other no's? All right, so um, the um, substitute resolution passes. Um, we're on RS 2021-1260 as substituted. Councilmember Sepulveda, back to you. Thank you, and I do want to thank Council Member Sledge for his leadership uh, in our substitute and um, making us, uh, you know, reevaluate what we are and aren't willing to do for affordable housing. And with that, uh, I'd like to uh, move the resolution as substituted. Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda has moved the resolution as substituted, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution as substituted? Being none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on RS 2021-1260 as substituted. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. One. one abstention. abstention. So we've got one no and one abstention. Councilmember Swope is abstaining. Councilmember Glover is voting no. Anybody else needs to be recorded? Okay, all right, thank you. Resolution passes as substituted. 
We're on RS 2021-1263 by Council Members Gamble, Johnston, Allen, Bradford, and Stiles. Resolution appropriating $9,069,614 in ARPA funds from Fund 30216 to General Services to expand the vehicle fleet of the Metro Nashville Police Department, Nashville Department of Transportation, and the Davidson County Sheriff's Office. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This uh, resolution comes as a recommendation from the ARP committee. Uh, the departments that are requesting funding for fleet, for new fleet uh, that has been needed uh, at least over a year. These, these departments came before the ARP committee last year when we were got the CARES funding, uh, but at that time the committee felt that the focus needed to be on the emergency response to the pandemic as well as helping our community, making sure we get uh, business relief, small business relief, relief for individuals, rent, mortgage relief, food relief, et cetera. So at that time, the committee did not look at or recommend any departmental needs. This time, uh, we have more funding and more time to uh, address all of the needs of the city. And so the committee felt that it was important that we provided this uh, allocation to address the shortage of vehicles that we have within NDOT, within MMPD, and within the uh, sheriff's, off sheriff's office. In total, there are 142 uh, fleet vehicles that are will be purchased with this allocation, and this will help improve service to our city for all of those agencies, uh, response time in particular, and just make them more efficient. And for those reasons, uh, we ask for support for this for this resolution. All Thank right, you. let me get some committee reports. Oh, Budget I'm sorry. And, that's okay. Budget and Finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, eight in favor, two against, and two not voting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public Health and Safety, Council Member Evans. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we voted in favor. Uh, nine in favor, zero against. Okay, and then transportation infrastructure, Council Member Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We voted to recommend uh, approval, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, and I'm gonna go back to Council Member Gamble for a motion on the resolution. Thank you, motion to approve. Okay, so Council Member Gamble has moved to approve, properly seconded. We have discussion. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I will not be supporting this tonight. I didn't vote for it in the ARP committee. Um, I know that my blog posts are long, so probably not everyone gets a chance to read it. But just to remind you all, we have a draft guide. It's not been adopted by the committee on priorities that we want to address uh, as it relates to the ARP funds. Um, we have been waiting to have community input, which would come via a hub survey so we could make sure that our draft guide, which is a pretty good plan, matches what the community needs are. Um, I, I feel that this resolution is short-sighted. Um, we have major community needs that we haven't addressed, small business relief, uh, child care. We're having issues with our trash pickup right now. I think uh, uh, vehicles for uh, Metro Water to help with trash pickup would be more prudent. Um, you know, it's give and take. If you allocate certain amount of money that it's, it's not gonna come back to us, it's gone. And we have no plan. We have no official plan. And I don't think we should be functioning that way. I, I see this more as a wish list item, um, even though, you know, Chief Drake made a good argument for it, but we have a limited amount of funds. So if we approve this, in the future, that might mean not not doing enough for other things that we wanted to tackle, like public safety, um, you know, green space, child care, free legal services. There, there are many things that we potentially will give up if we have no specific plan. And so, I would encourage you guys not to vote for this. Um, I, I mean, I appreciate that there is always need in departments, but I think we need to be prudent and not continue to vote for everything that comes before us until we have a plan. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Welsh. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I too will not be supporting um, 
this resolution this evening. Um, I feel like this is once again showing that our priorities are, are out of whack. I don't think that this is in the spirit of uh, the ARP funds, which really are meant to actually respond to a public health emergency um, or to the negative economic um, consequences of that emergency. And this is new money, straight up and running. This is new money. This has nothing to do, this request has nothing to do with COVID. This should have been a capital expense. Um, we're not doing this because of, of any revenue lost due to COVID. This is just straight up new money that should have been a capital expense. Um, we have been in the habit lately of using these funds to fund inanimate objects and things and not fully funding the human toll that this virus has taken on us all throughout um, our society from every level. Um, from lost jobs, lost housing, lost childcare. Um, COVID is with us. Uh, we're staring down an even more virulent strain right now that is affecting more and more people. Um, we need this money to deal with the human toll of COVID. We don't need to use this money to fund a capital expense, which is what this is. I just don't feel like we can justify this. And I think I agree with uh, my colleague um, Council Member Sepulveda, that this is short-sighted and um, just shows that as a body, we are not truly paying attention to the needs of the citizens here as they live and breathe. And I think we need to change our focus. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Welsh. Um, we're having a few problems with our technical stuff. Um, Council Member Young, uh, you're next. Previous question. Um, Council Member Young has called the previous question. Uh, Council Member Stiles, you're having trouble with your button. Uh, it is not. Okay, so he's checking it right now. Um, but we're on the previous question. Let's see where we go with that. Um, Council Member Young has called the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Um, so it's a, we have to have, what, two-thirds? You can check. It's, it's, it's just in the list up there. How many? All right, so it's a two-thirds vote on a previous question. So uh, just to be on the safe side, we're going on the board. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, uh, we're not, again, we're not voting on the resolution. That's right. Okay, so it's two-thirds um, of those who are present and voting. So we're going to have to get on the board just to make sure we've got this right. Okay, so Madam Clerk, it's a previous question. Again, not on the resolution, just on the previous question. If you're for going ahead and voting, you would vote yes. If you're not, uh, if you want more discussion, you would vote no. Okay. Madam Clerk, just, uh, Madam Clerk is ready. Uh, open up the machines. Again, just on the previous question. So it'll be. Okay, some people have not voted, which is okay. I'll give you just another minute. Again, it's two thirds of those present and voting. Federal votes count. Yeah. All right, Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. Okay, so the previous question fails. Uh, previous question fails. All right. Um, all right. Um, double checking. <laughs> I can just tell that it fails. Yeah. All right. So we're uh, back on. Oh, let me go back. OK, 
Okay, uh, Councilmember Johnston, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so I'm in support of this resolution. I'm a sponsor of it. I don't think anybody disagrees with the need for these vehicles for these three departments. I think there's a question of um, number one, priority, number two, source of funds. Um, these vehicles are light fleet that cannot go into a capital spending plan. Only heavy fleet can. So that leaves operating funds, 4% funds, um, or this, really. Um, we don't vote on another operating budget for another six months, um, and, and the need is real. We, are, we have response times that are unsatisfactory for our constituents and for the police department. Um, again, the need is there. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. Um, so as far as priority, I think we all agree that we want to get these dollars into the hands of Nashvillians. Um, and small businesses and support that. Um, we had a delay with our economic development um, allocation because of some um, personal tragedy. Um, and so that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that that's not a priority and that is coming soon. They are coming to make that ask at, the, at our next meeting on the 13th. So you'll be seeing that. We just made a very significant um, allocation to affordable housing. We've made some allocations to um, KC homes uh, and, and, and the like. So we are moving forward. We've only allocated, if all of this is allocated, around 90, 95 million out of the 260. So we have plenty to go. Again, this is, this is a significant need. Um, and so I hope that everyone will support this um, allocation. Um, and it is, it, it is a one-time expenditure. I think we do need to get to the point where somewhere in our operating budget, we are every year allocating towards our fleet. We have gotten ourselves into a massive hole. Um, we started off two years ago with $120 million of a hole. Um, and so I, I ordinarily would not support this, but we've got to somehow get out of the hole. Um, thankfully, President Biden did expand the use of these funds to include public safety because of the call from municipalities um, as it relates to increasing crime rates due to COVID. Um, it is... It is appropriate, um, and I hope that you will all support this. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I wanted to uh, make some observation that we, we do realize that there was a problem with the fleet. We, we are in the old, and we've been making stride towards that. Uh, in FY20, we uh, approved 55 uh, police vehicles um, which is 41 SUV and 14 mid-size sedan. In FY21, we actually approved 89 SUVs and 26 uh, mid-size sedan, which is about 115 cars. And then in this, at this meeting, the last one and this one, today with our resolution 1278 and 1279, we will also be approving about 77 vehicles. Now, I understand their replacement, but I think I just want to point out that it's not like we're not making stride or we're not listening or we're not doing anything for the police department. Uh, the conversation is just about this nine million, is this the time to use it for cars? Or since we're replacing all these fleets, can we use that to deal with issues that are more urgent that goes directly to the, uh, to the citizens and then come back to this? But I wanted to po point out that today, we have approved 77 police cars and we did approve 115 for the last fiscal year, so thank you. All right, thank you. Councilmember Stiles, do you have a point of order? Or are you just, are you trying to get somebody's attention? Wait a minute, here, uh, let me recognize you because I can't hear you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I still can't use uh, my button even though it had been pushed, okay, so my got, hand we, was up. We've got you on here. Oh, you did? Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we've got you, okay. Uh, Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized. There you go. There, you're previous on. Previous question. All right. Uh, Councilmember uh, Pulley has uh, called the previous question. Uh, we're voting on the previous question. Again, um, remember, if you want to um, uh, go ahead and vote on this resolution, you'd vote aye. If you want to continue discussion, you'd vote no. Okay. Uh, we're back on the machines. Um, Madam Clerk. Um, 
Council Member Stiles, is your machine working? Can you vote? You can't even, you can't vote either? Okay, you can vote, okay. All right, Madam Clerk, you ready? Uh, open up the machines. Again, this is a vote on the previous question. It requires a two-thirds of those present and voting. Uh, Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. All right, the vote is 24 to 10. Uh, the uh, previous question prevails this time, okay? So we are on the resolution. It is RS 2021-1263. Uh, we are voting on um, that matter. Um, just because I know there's gonna be negative votes. Madam Clerk, can you get the machine ready? Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, open up the machines. We're voting on RS 2021-1263. All votes are in. Okay. All votes are in. Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. Vote is ayes 25, noes 8, three abstentions. Uh, the bill, a resolution passes. Uh, we are now on um, item 25. This is RS 2021-1296 uh, by council members Allen, Evans, and Stiles. This is a resolution accepting the Edwin Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government through the Police Department to support a broad range of activities to prevent and control crime, including technology, upgrade supplies for direct support, in-service and specialized training. Council member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports? Uh, I've got one from Budget and Finance and one from Public Health and Safety. I'll go to Council Member Evans first. Uh, we voted to approve uh, with nine in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Council Member Allen, Budget and Finance. Thank you. Budget and Finance uh, recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against, and I move for approval. Okay, so Council Member Allen has moved for approval of RS 2021-1296. Council Member O'Connell, you recognized. Oh, I'm sorry. She's got the motion properly seconded. Now you're recognized. Oh, good. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so on this one, uh, just I'm going to encourage colleagues to support it. I'm going to support it. The uh, You'll remember, I hope, in September, we approved the application for this process. And I think as we are now accepting the successful uh, JAG award, uh, I do want to ask the administration if they would be willing to commit. As we were working on the application in September, they sent out a helpful history, uh, which indicated the past uh, multi-departmental uh, approach here, and I'd, I'd love for the administration to comment on uh, and, and ideally commit to uh, restoring a collaborative application process for this. I know that multiple departments can make use of these funds, and I'm certainly supportive of the uh, law enforcement needs we have, but I know that we've in the past also funded things like the juvenile court team and, and multiple other departments, and I'd love to get the administration uh, to commit to restoring that process that allows multiple departments to submit for this. Uh, and I'll, I'll wait for their response. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Um, Mr. Jameson from the administration. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Um, I know my place on the letterhead in the office, so I, I don't know that I have the authority to commit to anything, but I will certainly uh, broach this topic with uh, the mayor in the morning just for a, a, a brief 
re review of uh, the discussion in September. So the, the burn uh, grant used to be called the local law enforcement enforcement uh, block grant. It was a much larger federal program and it was administered in two parts, uh, one through the state and one locally, but the uh, federal administrators required that it be dispersed across all entities that had any sort of law enforcement capacity. So that included not just the Metro Police, but the Parks Police, uh, the Juvenile Court, the JIS system, any agency that had engagement. Uh, sometime around 2004, 2005, it got changed to the Edward Byrne Memorial Grant, and the amount of federal funding total started shrinking pretty dramatically and the eligible programs that uh, were available to the various departments essentially made it no longer worth their while. Um, it ranged up in the, the millions previously, but now the individual grants were below $300,000. Uh, it also became uh, somewhat tedious in terms of submitting the necessary documentation. The police developed some expertise in maintaining their eligibility uh, and other departments um, a combination of ineligibility and, and a loss of interest. Um, even though uh, the federal administrators dropped the requirement that it be shared, uh, that a police department continued to do so here in Metro for five years, uh, but then there uh, appeared to be some lack of interest at the local level. I should underscore that the state level of the JAG grant remains open to any and all comers. Uh, the, the library has obtained a state level JAG grant, and we would certainly encourage that. But I will uh, appreciate Councilman O'Connell's request. We'll take it up with uh, with the mayor in the morning and report back to the council. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I think that's uh, appropriate, Mr. Jamison. I guess my other request would be maybe we could um, get, get some affirmation of that lack of interest, because I've heard that there is ongoing interest in this, which is the only reason I bring it up, is that it is, uh, you know, there there is still some uh, interest at the local level, and maybe we could get a report on the eligibility. And maybe that's the way to go is prior to the next application cycle, if we could get a, a report on eligibility and, and, and you know, maybe there's an approach to reducing that tedium. So appreciate that, and I'll look forward to working uh, with the administration further on this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Appreciate uh, the conversation, and uh, certainly want this to be uh, open to whoever's eligible to. Uh, to apply for it. I uh, just want to clarify something that I think I heard from Mr. Jameson regarding the eligibility is uh, this, I understand, shrunk. Uh, basically, the eligibility portion of it so to where it's very specific in nature. So uh, uh, is that what I heard you say, Mr. Jameson? Mr. Jameson? That is correct. The original grants were in the million-dollar range, and then it became about $300,000. And so the, if you divided that up among the 10 or so agencies that previously came under any sort of criminal law enforcement, um, it was not a lot of money for any, any group of departments that might apply. And uh, so we're, we'll look forward to a report from the mayor's office, I assume, and uh, consistent with Councilman O'Connell's request, on yes, sir. which will include that eligibility. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Councilmember Pulley. Anybody else in the queue? Seeing none, I have a motion from Councilmember Allen, and it's been properly seconded on item 25. It's RS 2021-1296. Ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2021-1296 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Uh, last item on the, res on the uh, resolution section is item number 32. It's RS 2021-1303 by Councilmember Toombs, Hurt, and Taylor. It's a resolution requesting the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee to recommend to the Metropolitan Council the appropriation of not less than $70 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds to be appropriated to the Mayor's Office of Economic Community Development for economic development in disadvantaged communities with particular emphasis on Bordeaux and North Nashville and for funding of the Nashville Small Business Recovery Fund. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, budget and Finance, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended a deferral to February 1, 12 in favor, zero against. First meeting in February? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Move to defer to the first meeting in February. All right. Uh, Councilmember Toombs has moved to defer to the first meeting in February, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? 
Being none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Deferral motion is adopted. All right, uh, we're now on bills on introduction and first reading. Any bills that need to be considered separately? Otherwise, we'll take them all at the same time. Seeing none, uh, need a motion to approve all Move. bills on introduction and first reading. Got a motion properly seconded. All those in favor of bills on introduction and first reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bills are adopted on introduction and first reading. We do have a late filed um, bill. Um, it is by Council Member Parker. It is an ordinance uh, to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by changing from RM20ANS to RM20A, zoning for property located at 123 Elmhurst Avenue, northwest corner of Lucille Street, and Elmhurst Avenue is 0.13 acres. Council Member Parker, you recognized on your late filed bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do I need to call for a suspension of the rules in order to have this heard? Yes. All right, I would call for a suspension of the rules to have this All right, heard. Let me go to Rules Committee. Uh, Councilman Vercher, uh, did uh, Councilman Parker show up at rules today? He did, Vice Mayor. Okay, and what did you all decide? There was no objections. All right, thank you. So, Councilman Parker, uh, you want to move to suspend the rules. All right, so um, is there objection to suspension of rules to get this matter considered tonight on first reading? Any objections? Seeing none, um, rules are suspended. Councilmember Parker, you're on your bill. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I've just moved for approval today, um, and, and we'll have a, a public hearing as usual with this one. It'll be re-noticed, and uh, we will have discussion in committee. All right, so uh, you simply want to go ahead and move it on first reading. Pass That's correct, on move reading. on first reading. All right, so the motion is to approve this bill on first reading properly. Seconded, any discussion on the motion? Councilmember O'Connell? Thank you, Mr. President. It's mostly a point of order. Uh, I am listed on the caption here, and it is not my bill, and I don't know if that's just something clerical we need to address. On the screen. I don't know if it's on the... Oh. Um, no, we just like to put your names on all kinds of legislation. <laughs> and you can put... I'm, I'm going to vote against it if my name's on it, but... Uh... <laughs> It's Elmhurst. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, we think it's just a mistake. But um, I just wanted to make sure as we bring it back that we, we have that corrected for when it hits the floor. All right. We will take care of it. Uh, again, the motion is to approve on first reading, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Any other names up on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill well, is adopted on first reading. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. Uh, we are now on bills on second reading. There is a second reading uh, consent calendar. Um, stay with me. Uh, item number 45 is the first one. It's bill 2021-1021 is on consent. 1024 is on consent. 1026 is on consent. 1027 on consent. 1028 on consent, and 1029 on consent. Anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, uh, these are the items on the consent calendar tonight. Or is, uh, it's BL 2021-1021 by Council Member Hall. It's an ordinance to, to amend ordinance number BL 2021-693. Previously established the Special Solid Waste and Recycling Commission to revise the participation role of staff from the Solid Waste Division of the Metro Public Works Department uh, to Metro Water Services. Um, BL 2021-1024 by Council Member Stiles, Allen, Withers, Bradford, and Young. Ordinance declaring a certain plan road on the Orchard Bend Park property to be a public right-of-way and granting a temporary access easement. BL 2021-1026 by Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing PDP Acquisitions LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at alley number 806, the intersection of Hagen Street. BL 2021-1027 by O'Connell, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water, sanitary sewer, and storm uh, sewer mains, sanitary sewer manhole, catch basins, easements to relocate a fire hydrant assembly, and to accept new water and storm uh, sewer mains, storm catch basins, water quality units, and easements for five properties located on 7th Avenue South, 8th Avenue South, and Fog Street, also known as Paseo South Gulch. 
O'Connell, Withers, and Youngers are the sponsors. Uh, BL 2021-1028, it's item number 50, Council Members Nash, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to relocate a water pressure reducing valve, construct public water mains, and to acquire temporary and permanent easements through negotiation, condemnation, and acceptance for property located at 5646 Amelie Drive. And the last item on the consent agenda for second reading is Bill 2021-1029 by Benedict Withers and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to replace the sanitary sewer force main, construct a new sanitary sewer force main, acquire temporary easement through negotiation, condemnation, and acceptance for the Clean Water Nashville OAP House Avenue force main replacement project. Properties located along House Avenue, Rothwood Avenue, uh, Geeson Drive, Idlewild Court, and Idlewild Place. Uh, Benedict Withers and Young again are the sponsors. Those are one, two, three, four, five. Those are the six bills on consent for second reading. Anything that needs to be bumped off that I read? Seeing none, I need some committee reports. Uh, Budget and Finance Council Member Allen, uh, you've got one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval for BL 2021-1024, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. <laughs> planning and Zoning, Councilmember Rutherford. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, planning and Zoning considered 1024, 1026, 1027, 1028, and 1029, voting nine in favor, zero against on all. All right, uh, Public Facilities, Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, thank you. Yes, we heard uh, 1024 and voted in favor of a roundabout, which is something that's dear to me. Six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Van Rees. Councilmember Young, Transportation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I assured you in that committee meeting we did not speak in circles. Um, Transportation Committee heard bills 1021, 1024, 1026, 1027, 1028, and 1029, and we uh, recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against. All right, can you give me a motion to approve? I so move. All right, so Council Member Young has moved to approve those bills on uh, the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the uh, bills on second reading uh, on the consent agenda are adopted. All right, so we go back to uh, the first bill up on second reading. It's Bill 2021-961. Council members Johnston, Pulley, Nash, and others in order to amending section 13.08.080 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to pertaining to the use of license plate scanner technology in the public rights of way. Council member Johnston, you are recognized. Committee reports, please. All right, transportation infrastructure, Council member Young. We voted 10 in favor, zero against, for a deferral to the second meeting of January. Okay. And uh, public health and safety, Council Member Evans. We also voted 10 in favor, zero against, to defer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. I'd like to defer to the second meeting in January, please. Okay. I got a deferral to the second meeting in January, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, we're voting on a motion to defer to the second meeting in January. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion carries. Deferred to the second meeting in January. Uh, BL 2021-1010 by Councilmember Glover, an ordinance to amend Chapter 6.77. The Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to operation of entertainment transportation vehicles. Councilmember Glover, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, transportation infrastructure. Council Member Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We voted 10 in favor, zero against for a one meeting deferral. Okay. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to defer one meeting with a brief explanation. All right. I got a deferral motion for one meeting. Properly seconded. Back to you. Uh, so I think we're deferring to get make uh, that we have language clarification, and I think we're going to find out it was because basically in talking with the attorney, the same um, folks worked on it. So I think everything will be cleared up. But the, the key thing I do want to point out in this, even though we're deferring it, the, the one key issue in this is staying 600 feet away from the schools and throughout Metro. I think that's going to be important no matter what part of the town that these uh, party vehicles are in, 600 feet away. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, we get all clarification. Everything uh, realized is that it's not in conflict and we go forward, but uh, we get it moved on the next one. So with that, I renew, renew the motion to defer one meeting. All right. So the motion is to defer one meeting. 
Uh, again, it was properly seconded. Uh, Councilmember McConnell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. We've got a, <clears throat> you know, this is this is a, a place where we're threading a needle where we are um, asking our peers in the General Assembly to work with us on some regulatory clarity on this front. Just want to make sure uh, we don't create any additional hurdles in that regard and appreciate uh, Councilmember Glover's willingness to collaborate on this. I think we can get to a, a good outcome here. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Again, we're on a deferral motion of one meeting. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Me uh, the uh, bill is deferred, one meeting. Uh, we're on item number 43. This is bill 2021-1013 by Councilmember Van Rees, Allen, and others. Ordinance approving a lease agreement bond between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting bond through the Metropolitan Board of Education and Liberty Collegiate Academy. Councilmember Van Rees, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Uh, budget and finance, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended a one meeting deferral, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay. Actually, that's, okay, go ahead. Okay, um, somebody's got, who's got education? Uh, Councilmember Sepulveda. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Education uh, voted six in favor, zero against for a one meeting deferral for 1030. Okay, planning and zoning, Councilmember Rutherford. Planning and zoning voted uh, nine in favor and zero against on the substitute and nine in favor and zero against uh, on the uh, bill as substituted. So you approved the bill as substituted? That's correct. Okay. All right. Councilmember Van Rees, back to you. Um, yes, I understand um, my uh, colleagues desire to hear directly from Metro schools in regard to how um, these um, items have come to us. And although it was approved at the Planning Commission, uh, I support the deferrals of the other committees and ask for that from the whole body at this time. All right, so uh, Councilman Van Rees, the motion is to defer one meeting? Correct. Okay, uh, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion for one meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this, the motion passes. Bill is deferred one meeting. Uh, we've got a similar bill, Bill 2021-1015. Mm. Allen, Withers, Robertson, Lee. Uh, Council Member Allen, ordinance approving a lease agreement binding between the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Board of Education and Nashville Prep. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Okay, uh, education. Council Member Sepulveda. Thank you. Education voted to defer one meeting, seven in favor, zero against. Uh, Council Member Rutherford, planning and zoning. Planning and zoning voted nine in favor and zero against to defer to the first meeting in January. Okay, and Council Member Allen, you've got budget and finance. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, budget and finance recommended a one meeting deferral, 12 in favor, zero against, and I move to defer one meeting. All right, Council Member Allen has moved to defer one meeting. That mm -hmm. is the first meeting in January. Uh, properly seconded, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. I heard two ayes. <laughs> aye. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. That's better. Uh, uh, the uh, motion passes. This one is deferred one meeting. Uh, we're on BL 2021-1025. That's item number 47. This is uh, by Councilmember Van Rees, Withers, Young, and others. Ordinance to amend the GIS System Street and Alley Centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of National Davis and County by renaming Woodruff Street between Gallatin Pike and the Peggy Street and Linda Lane intersection to David McMurray Way. Councilmember Van Rees, you're uh, Yes, I'd like to move a deferral to the first meeting in February with a brief exclamation. All right, let me get a couple committee reports just committee to bring, reports, bring them in. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Rutherford. Planning and zoning uh, voted nine in favor and zero against to defer to the first meeting in February. All right, uh, transportation, council member Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We voted 10 in favor, zero against to defer until February 1. All right, all right, council member Van Rees, you're recognized. Thank you very much. Um, this is uh, an automatic deferral actually because the historical commission staff uh, has not, uh, did not meet in December and has to meet in January. And so uh, it is being deferred because of that, but I'm, I'm welcoming it because that gives us the month of January uh, to uh, work with the David McMurray Memorial Committee and uh, those in the area, including constituents both in District 8 and District 9, uh, to make sure that we do this the right way. So I ask for that deferral and we'll get it right. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, what's your motion? Is your motion to the first meeting Deferred in February? Deferred to the first meeting in February. Okay, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer to the first meeting in February? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is adopted, deferred to the first meeting in 
February. Okay. And I believe those are all the bills on second reading. <clears throat> all right. So hold on to your hats. Uh, there's a bunch of them on third reading on the consent calendar. Uh, we'll go through them. Um, the first bill on the consent calendar for third reading is 787. That's item number 53. Uh, the second one is item number 55, that's 887 is on consent. The next one on consent is 929, and here we go, 930 is on consent, 946 on consent, 974 on consent, 975 on consent, 983 on consent. 984 on consent, 985 on consent, 986 on consent, 987 on consent, 988 on consent, 989 on consent, <coughs> 990 on consent, 991 on consent, 992 on consent, 994 on consent, 996 on consent, 997 on consent, 998 on consent, Item 77103, item uh, 77BL 2021 103 is on consent. I'm sorry, 1003 is on consent. 1004 is on consent. 1005 on consent. 1006 on consent. 1008 on consent. 1009 on consent. BL 2021 1012 is on consent. 1012 is on consent. Uh, 1016 is on consent, 1017 is on consent, 1017 is on consent, 1018 is on consent, 1019 is on consent, and 1020 is on consent. Uh, Councilmember Johnston. You're not Councilmember Johnston, but I'll recognize you. Councilmember Benedict at Councilmember Johnston's desk. I'll get it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Could I have a point of personal privilege, please? Sure. Thank you. So I'm back here because it seems to me that we have a Georgia... Um, fan in the back row who also enjoys stealing things like the beautiful Michigan sweatshirt that I had on just a little bit ago. So I just want to make sure that for the rest of the meeting while I wear my national championship, well, I'm sorry, almost national championship <laughs> Michigan Wolverine shirt casually for the rest of this meeting, I want to make sure that this body is aware that somebody back here in the very back row enjoys taking things from our desks. So please just beware, and let's just make sure those dogs go down. Thank you right. for the privilege, uh, Vice Thank Mayor. you, and I don't know who you're talking about, but I assume it's Councilmember Rosenberg. All right, um, <coughs> Councilmember Pooley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I couldn't let that go by without responding. Um, I, I would like to point out to Councilmember Benedict just how incredibly dominant the South Car the Southeastern Conference has been over the mid-major conference that Michigan resides in, called the Micro Ten. Uh, but uh, also, my colleagues would just uh, dread hearing the long list of accomplishments the SEC has had over the Big Ten and over the entire country over the past 20 or 30 years. So I will refrain from doing that, but anybody can see me after the meeting, and I'll spend about two hours explaining that to you. Thank you. There's a point of order from Councilmember Hancock. Councilmember Hancock. Thank you. I just didn't want to disrespect any of our fantastic folks here in Nashville that made the wisest decision that you can make when you're selecting someone to play in the Music City Bowl as they chose the Tennessee Volunteers. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilmember Van Rees, you're recognized. Yeah, sooner or later, we will be talking about women's basketball before I leave office. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would like to make sure that uh, item number 85 is removed from the consent agenda so we can speak on it. Thank you. Okay, let's see. That's item 1016. A item 85. Item 85 is um, Bill 2021-1016. It's taken off of consent. Anything else needs to come off of consent? You all could have had that entire discussion while I was reading uh, the captions, which is going to take about 20 minutes. But that would be rude to discuss that while you're... 
It would be rude? No, it would be very much wealthy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, here it goes. BL 2021 787, item number 53 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by change from CS and CL to SP zoning for properties located at 1505, 1509, 1511, 1513, 1601, 1603 Dickerson Pike. Uh, 1600, 1608, 1612, and 1616 Luton Street and Dickerson Pike unnumbered permit a mixed use development. Uh, that's Councilmember Parker, 787. The next item is Bill 2021 887 by Councilmember Parker, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2021 787. Proposed specific plan zoning district located 1505, 1509, 1511, 1513, 1601, 1603 Dickerson Pike, 1600, 1608, 1612, 1616 Luton Street and Dickerson Pike. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, next item on uh, consent is item 57, Bill 2021-929 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RA to, uh, to SP zoning for properties located at 334 and 336 Ewing Drive, approximately 560 feet west of Richmond Hills Drive at 11.81 acres, permit 100 multifamily residential units. Bill 2021-930 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2021-929. Proposed specific plan zoning district located 334, 336, Ewing Drive, 560 feet west of Richmond Hills Drive. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, item number 59, BL 2021, 946 by Council Member Taylor. Ordinance to amend Title 17. Uh, a request to rezone from R6 and CS to SP zoning for properties located at 1919, 1924, 1928, 9th Avenue North, southeast and southwest corners of Clay Street, 9th Avenue North, 1.12 acres per minute mixed use development. BL 2021 974, Allen Styles and Roberts. Ordinance amending Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding the design and operation of outdoor electrical lighting, clarify application of the dark sky regulations by public utilities on public property. BL 2021 975 by Sepulveda and Suara. Ordinance amending section 17.40.660 of the Metropolitan Code to amend the limitations to rebuilding a non conforming structure. BL 2021 983 by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R10 to SB zoning. Properties located at Lincoln Avenue unnumbered and Curtis Street unnumbered at the northwest terminus of Curtis Street, 31.58 acres, permit 300 multifamily residential units. BL 2021-984 by Tombs. Ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2021-983. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at Lincoln Avenue and Curtis Street at the northwest terminus of Curtis Street. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. BL 2021-985 by Council Member Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from SP to SP zoning for property located at Skyline Ridge Drive, unnumbered approximately 415 feet east of Dickerson Pike, 24.97 acres permit 240 multi-family residential units. Bill 2021-986, this is the companion bill, ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for 985. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at Skyline Ridge Drive, approximately 415 feet east of Dickerson Pike. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Bill 2021-987 by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the Southgate Station specific plan for various properties located north of Southgate Avenue and on either side of Marshall Hollow Drive, 1.97 acres. Prohibit non-owner occupied short-term rental and owner occupied short-term rental uses. Bill 2020-988 by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from the 522 to 526 Southgate Avenue specific plan for various properties located north of Southgate Avenue and approximately 120 feet west of Marshall Hollow Drive, 0.97 acres. Prohibit non-owner occupied short-term rental and owner occupied short-term rental uses. Bill 2021-989 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R10 to SP zoning for properties located at 2304 A through F uh, Lloyd Avenue, approximately 360 feet north of Curtis Street, 1.02 acres, permit five multifamily residential units. Uh, BL 2021990, -920, that's the companion bill for 989. For specific plan zoning district located at 2304 8th through F Lloyd Avenue, approximately 360 feet north of Curtis Street, 1.02 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. BL 2021 991. By Council Member Van Rees, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R10 to SP zoning for properties located at 401 A through E Williams Avenue, approximately 870, 870 feet east of Walker Terrace, 2.46 acres, permit 32 multifamily residential units. BL 2021 992, companion bill to 991. 
proposed specific plan zoning district located at 401 A through E Williams Avenue, approximately 870 feet east of Walker Terrace. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Bill 2021-994 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from OL to IWD zoning for property located at 2975 Elm Hill Pike, approximately 365 feet east of Macquarie Creek Park uh, Road. It's 1.13 acres. BL 2021-996 is item number 73 by Council Member Van Reese. Uh, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 SP zoning for property located at 121 Hart Lane, approximately 200 feet east of Hart Court, 4.33 acres, permit 26 multifamily residential units, and 997 is the companion bill to 996. Uh, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 121 Hart Lane, 200 feet west of Hart Court. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. BL 2021 998 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IWD to MUNA zoning. Property located at 177 Little Green Street, approximately 140 feet west of Edgar Street. It's 0.14 acres. Uh, next item is BL 2021-1003 by Council Member Gamble. Ordinance to amend Title 17. Change from R20 to SP zoning for property located at 1300 Hunters Lane, approximately 600 feet north of Delmere Drive, 7.65 acres to permit a 69-unit multifamily residential development. And the companion bill is uh, 1004. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2021-1003. Proposed specific plan zoning district uh, located at 1300 Hunter's Lane, approximately 600 feet north of Delmere Drive, 7.65 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. BL 2021-1005 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IR to MULANS. Zoning for properties located at 905 and 907 East Trinity Lane, 3013-3015 Ambrose Avenue. The northeast corner of East Trinity Lane and Ellenson Parkway, 3.19 acres. Uh, BL 2021-1006 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance amend Title 17 by change from RS 7.5 and R8 to RM9 NS zoning for properties located at 3134, 3138, 3140, 3142, 3142B, 3144, and 3146 Glencliff Road, approximately 170 feet north of Twin Oaks Drive, 10.9 acres. BL 2021-1008 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IWD to MUNA zoning. Property located at 199 Little Green Street, approximately 110 feet southwest of Hermitage Avenue, it's 0.15 acres. Item number 82, BL 2021-1009 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from SP to IWD zoning for property located at 921 Perimeter Court. Current terminus of Perimeter Court, 3.42 acres. Uh, BL 2021-1012 by Council Member Hancock. Ordinance to amend Title 16 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to the examination and approval of permit applications and drawings. BL 2021-1017 by Evans and Allen. Uh, this is item number 86, an ordinance to bring an agreement between Trevec and Nazarene University and the Metropolitan Government through the Police Department to partner with the Criminal Justice Studies Department of Trevec and Nazarene University to provide career opportunities to qualified students. BL 2021-1018, Allen, Evans, Gamble, and others. An ordinance approving an agreement between Lights On and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County through the Police Department for the participation in the Lights On program that provides bulk bulb repair vouchers that officers may distribute to a target area in lieu of traffic tickets. Bill 2021-1019, Tombs, Wither, and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to ban an existing sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes for two properties located at 2982 and 3010 Brick Church Pike. Tombs, Wither, and Young are the sponsors. And then the final bill is Bill 2021-1020 by Council Member Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assembly, and easements, and to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements. Property located at 1201 Hillside Avenue, also known as the Reservoir Zone 4A. Those are the bills on third reading consent. Uh, anything, um, Council Member Van Rees, anything on here that needs to be bumped? Or is that from before? Yeah, I already, we already bumped. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything else? Anything else that needs to be bumped? All right. Uh, I've got uh, committee reports. The first one is Council Member Hancock, Government Operations. You've got one bill, 974. So, Government Operations voted seven in favor, zero against on 974. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then, Council Member Rutherford, you've got the, uh, the list. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Bear with me. Uh, planning and zoning considered 887, 929, 930, 946, 974, 975, 983, 984, 985, 986, 987, 988, 989, 990, 991, 992, 994, 996, 997, 998, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1008, and 1009. Voting nine in favor, zero against on all. Okay. And then I had um, two more. Wait a minute. Oh, but they've already been done. I don't, they're listed on here, but you didn't have to read them. Um, that brings back memories of uh, one John Cooper. Very good, Councilman Rutherford. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Councilman Rutherford, just because you did such a great job, could you have a motion to pass everything on third reading consent? Motion to pass a, the a consent on third reading. All right. So I got a motion to approve everything on third reading consent, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passage of third reading consent agenda, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Third reading consent agenda passes. All right, now we're going to go back and take up all the bills that um, <coughs> were not on third reading consent. Uh, the first one is Bill 2021-621 by Councilmember Murphy, Allen, O'Connell, and Bradford. It's an ordinance amending section 17.40.720, 17.40.730 of the Metropolitan Code. Require additional public notice regarding applications for permits from the Historic Zoning Commission. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Planning and Zoning, Councilmember Rutherford. Planning and Zoning uh, voted nine in favor, zero against of the substitute, and then voted nine in favor and zero against for a deferral to the first meeting in January. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, back to you. Thank you. I'd like to move the substitute with a brief explanation. Okay. So what, can, uh, so Councilmember uh, Murphy moves the, it's the second substitute, correct? Yes. Councilmember Murphy moves the second substitute, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you. What this substitute does is it seeks to clarify a little bit more about what projects go before the council and need public, I mean, go before the Historic Zoning Commission and need um, notification or not. It also cleans up um, in the substitute that we had previously on the bill, it cleans up where that had delegated signage to be determined by the planning commission staff and it needs to be historic staff. And then um, I've also reached out and did hear back from historic that there, I mean, sorry, from Metro Legal that there are some discrepancies in the code. I have asked historic if they would like us to address that as we're uh, pursuing this uh, bill. So what I'd like to do tonight is to get the amendment, the substitute on, the second substitute on, so we can have it out there for public consumption and continue to work through if, if they want to clean up their discrepancies. Otherwise, we'll look at the Metro um, legal opinion and, and see if we need further clarification. And so what I'll be doing tonight is I ask for your support on the second substitute, and then I'll be deferring this to the first meeting in January, which hopefully means we can um, put this through. Okay. So Council Member Murphy has moved the second substitute properly second, and we have people in the queue. Council Member Weathers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor, and I appreciate the sponsor bringing this, because uh, I know the Historic Zoning Commission has worked through um, uh, several, we've worked through updates to design guidelines and a number of things. And I, I know neighborhoods definitely are very concerned about what goes on around them uh, and, and trying to strike that balance between uh, neighborhood concerns, but also wanting to property owners, most of whom, in, at least in District 6, are homeowners, uh, to be able to get their permits in a timely manner, especially for things that are ordinarily would be administratively approved. Um, I appreciate the sponsor working on this. My, and I apologize that I wasn't able to be in committee yesterday. Uh, my sense is that actually it, the intent of clarification is good, but for me reading it, uh, it seems that it's actually a little bit more confusing. And so that's why uh, I, I'm just wondering if, uh, if we could just maybe have a, a committee meeting about it just to, to talk through all the things that the sponsors raised um, and, and kind of go from there rather than put on a substitute that it sounds like may be amended at least once, if not a couple more times. So I just have a little bit of, I understand the desire to get this in front of the public, but I just worry that despite a lot of work that's gone into it already, that maybe it's just not quite there yet. And if we could get a little bit more of a kind of a round table that we might get uh, better clarification. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Murphy. So we started this conversation, um, originally it was scheduled for uh, a year ago last week. 
Um, and if you recall, I, I bumped that meeting to January because my hip surgery had been moved up. And so I've literally been working on this since then. Um, I've asked historic several times for different pieces of information. And um, I am, uh, I'm hoping to give them some more time to give feedback because unfortunately most of the questions are met with somewhat different information. I think at this time it's important to move forward. The definition that we have in this substitute that I'm asking you all to support tonight is out of Richmond, um, Virginia, and I'm happy to share and forward to the committee uh, the, the guidebook that, that I found it from there. Uh, I think that Metro Legal and their opinion that they sent up this week has some more guidance that will help with that. But I think it's important to get the substitute on so we are all working from the same draft and from the same page of, of direction that we are going in. Um, my co-sponsors have been um, aware of this and, and have shared with the, we've, I've asked the council staff to share with them the Metro legal opinion as well. And I think at this time we need to put the substitute on so we can continue to move forward and have a constructive conversation rather than it being confusing as to what we are discussing. Okay. So with that, I would again uh, request your support for the second substitute, because again, it is being deferred. It's a title 17. It can be deferred longer than one meeting, but we've had this come up in committee and it has been discussed in committee on more than one occasion. And we have had a special health meeting as well. All right, uh, Council Member Cash, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also uh, like appreciate Councilmember Murphy's great work on this bill. Uh, I think it's really important uh, that we help neighborhoods and, and property owners in, in conservation and historic overlays uh, know when, and I think the intent of this bill all along has been to let them know when major renovations are taking place. Um, they, you know, Historic sends out the agenda every month uh, and anybody can sign up to get that, but not everybody does that. And so I think it's, it's important that we help property owners close to these renovations, these especially major renovations, know what's going on ahead of time. Um, so I appreciate all this great work. I will uh, remind council members that these aren't zoning changes. They're uh, reviews of uh, uh, plans and, and making sure that they follow uh, design guidelines, historic and conservation overlay design guidelines. Uh, I share uh, Councilman Withers' um, concern about uh, how, how in the substitute some of the, we've been, with this bill, we've been trying to, to find that line when, and define it well. When do we let uh, councilmen, when do we let neighbors and which neighbors, how far out from the property know uh, when a rent, when a, a uh, uh, hearing is going to be before the Historic Zoning Commission. And I, I kind of feel like this, this, I feel like goes a little far uh, or a little farther than I'm comfortable with in terms of, uh, I think the first, one of the first parts of the substitute um, makes uh, what Historic has been doing, administrative permits, uh, kind of pulls that into the notification process. And I am not convinced that that doesn't go too far. So I, I think we're getting close on this bill. This, this, there's aspects of this substitute that do make me nervous, um, uh, but I appreciate all the, all the good work on it and think ultimately we'll come up with something that, is, that hits the right spot in terms of which properties we, we do notify neighbors about. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Allen. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I, I share the same concern and, I, and I've spoken with the sponsor about this a, a little bit. This, as we've said, this was born out of um, many neighbors asking just for um, a more um, obvious way to know when, when a historic property near them may be being considered for a major change. And, and I, I appreciate the fact that we have now required a sign in, in a, a, a fashion that is important. Um, the, the, the one part of this that concerns me is the um, the, the need for clarification, I totally agree with. Um, what we've done is taken out language that says um, notification is required for um, any change which proposes demolition of a historic building, new construction of a primary building, an addition or outbuilding for a corner lot or any other preservation permit that requires setback determination. Um, and we're replacing that with uh, a much more specific 
uh, the language that comes from Richmond, but it, it essentially says anything except routine maintenance. And so what we're now saying is to the people that we have worked with um, to take on a historic overlay as something that would protect them. I have concerns that, that any anytime anyone is doing anything in their backyard that no one else can see, they're now gonna be required to advertise to the neighborhood, I'm putting on a deck or a, a porch or whatever. And in other parts of town, that's not necessarily required. Um, so that may be what we need to do. Um, and, and if that's how they do it in Richmond, maybe that's great. but. Um, I'm a little concerned about go ahead and adding this language um, before we've had time to digest if that's the right language for Nashville. So I appreciate the, um, the intent to acknowledge that we may not be done yet, that we may need to add some specificity to when it can be administratively approved and when this is gonna go before the planning commission, pardon me, the historic commission, um, and that we need to notify the neighbors. Um, and so I appreciate the, the deferral and I like many parts of the substitute, but that particular piece right there is a big change. And I, I, I'm just a little nervous about putting it in and then maybe taking it back out again. And it may be more productive to, um, to wait on that piece of it. So I am not comfortable with the substitute um, and I appreciate the offer for the deferral. Thank you. All right, Councilor Murphy, uh, you're recognized. So last meeting and last committee meeting uh, for planning, I had this amendment filed and I brought it up um, and, and referenced it and referenced that I was trying to get uh, an opinion from Metro Legal. The reason I did that was to get the information out there. I did not get feedback from simply having the, the amendment filed. I did not get feedback from the committee or um, from, from other members, but it has been discussed in the planning committee twice. And my concern is, is that if we simply just keep uh, deferring the bill without putting an, 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 the substitute on there for discussion to continue to work on, I'm not going to continue to get the feedback because we haven't gotten it yet. So this amendment has been filed for, for two council meetings now. It's been in the committee twice now. I'm keeping the bill in committee so I can hopefully get some feedback um, since that is the proper place to have it since we can't have meetings outside unless we, we have a special called meeting. So what I would appreciate is that we can get this substitute on. So hopefully I will get some feedback from committee members, from other council members who have overlays in their district. Because my concern is, is I've had it out there for a month and without putting it on, I'm not getting feedback. So uh, I think at, at this juncture, I would appreciate getting the substitute on. I'd appreciate if you have a historic overlay in your district, please review it. If you have not, um, this is gonna be deferred. If, I, if we still are uncomfortable with it, I have no problem continuing to defer this until we get it right. I've been very clear about that for an entire year. So hopefully um, we will get some feedback on this to make it work for us, but without some sort of specific definition to work off of, I'm concerned that I'm not going to be given um, constructive feedback to move forward, and, and we've at that point wasted a year, and, and I'm not sure how much time we want to continue to put into something if we're not getting um, collaborative feedback across the council. So I would appreciate a, a, a positive vote to put the, the second substitute on so we can hopefully get this bill moving and out the door. Right, Council Member Rosenberg, you're next. Previous question. All right, so um, uh, the, the call has been made for the previous question. Let me make sure everybody knows where we are. Councilman Murphy has moved her second substitute for passage tonight. That's what we're, that's what we're considering right now. We're not voting on the bill or uh, the second substitute on this. We're just voting on the, whether you're ready to vote. Um, just on the previous question, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, pretty clear previous question prevails. All right, so we're, uh, what we're voting on is uh, Council Member Murphy's motion to approve the second substitute. Uh, we'll try it by, by voice vote and then we'll see. All those in favor of Council Member Murphy's uh, motion to approve her second substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, 
So the, I believe the eyes have it. Eyes have it. Okay. Uh, so the second substitute goes on. Can't, can't, am I asking you? I'm just saying it out loud in case any of you already wanted to do something. So the second substitute prevails. It's on the, the bill. Councilman Murphy, you're recognized on bill 2021-621 uh, with the second substitute on it. Renew my motion to defer. Okay, the motion is to defer one meeting, right, to the first meeting in January. Seconded. Uh, discussion on the deferral motion. I got a bunch of people in the queue, but I think that was from before. Anybody on the deferral motion? Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so I don't, I, I, I actually haven't reviewed the second substitute, um, and I, I would certainly like an opportunity. I have two um, neighborhoods with historic overlays, um, conservation overlays in my district, and I would like the opportunity to be able to take this to those neighborhood association meetings to discuss the second substitute. So I do wonder if the sponsor would entertain um, a longer deferral, um, if, if, if they would find that to be appropriate. Um, uh, Councilman Murphy? Uh, I, I am happy to, uh, trying to think what, I, what the right word is, take back my motion. I, I'm blanking on my parliamentary procedure. Rescind, thank you. Thank you, it's been a long day. Um, I will rescind my motion and happy to renew it to the first meeting in February. Will that give you enough time? I mean, again, my concern in here is that it has been out there for a year. This amendment's been out there for over a month. Um, and so I, I want to get it moving because right now applicants are kind of in a limbo since we've passed second reading. Um, but it, if you think February, first meeting in February gives you enough time, Councilman, do your, do your uh, community meet in Councilman January? Parker. That would be better. I believe both Maxwell and Greenwood will have met by then. So Perfect. I'll be able to discuss it with them. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, so um, Councilman Murphy has moved uh, to renew my motion the first for the... meeting in February. Yes. Again, properly seconded. Any questions on the deferral motion? All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Deferral motion passes. Uh, Councilmember Young, what I was doing was um, you give people time on it, on something just to make sure everybody was okay with the vote. That was what I was doing. I was asking you personally whether you thought I'd passed it. Okay. So uh, BL 2021-621 has the second substitute on it, but it's deferred into the first meeting in February. Okay. Uh, next item is item number 54, it's BL 2021-853 by Council Member Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by applying a historic landmark overlay district to properly located 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive, and Old Hickory Boulevard Zone RS 21.44 acres. Uh, that can be taken with item number 56, Council Member Van Rees, that's the companion bill. It's a proposed historic landmark overlay district to include properties located at 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard, 1.44 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilman Van Rees, uh, you are recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, I need to uh, make a motion to rescind on second reading with a brief explanation. All right, so council members, so y'all need to pay attention to this. Council Member Van Rees has moved to um, rescind her actions that were taken on second reading on BL 2021-853 and BL 2021-889. That's her motion properly seconded. Uh, Ms. Eitlin is here ready to explain if you need her help. I'll see Council if I can Member do Van it. Reese. You can tell me if I got it right. You're recognized. <laughs> um, uh, colleagues, I uh, actually uh, made this application myself as a council member. And uh, so the, the notices that needed to be uh, happening, including the signage in front of the buildings, uh, was not executed by the planning staff. It was just a mistake on their part. But because of that, it was not properly notified for the um, public hearing that we had. And so we're gonna, I'm going to have to do that again. So I'd like to, uh, again, renew my motion to rescind on second reading and uh, move the public hearing to February 1st. Did I do that right? Let's, uh, let's do them one at a time. All right. Okay, so the motion is to rescind this council's action on second reading on BL 2021-853 and 889. It's been properly seconded. Ms. Eitlin, uh, any additional comments? No, this is just a, a notice issue, so it's going to be uh, need to have another public hearing after after a proper notice period. 
Okay. It, it has full community support. I appreciate uh, my colleagues just understanding the pressures that the planning staff had. And they just simply forgot to put the sign out. So uh, I appreciate your assistance in getting this to move forward. So a motion to rescind is actually in our rules, requires, um, it's, rule a, it's rule 37. Any affirmative action of the council may be rescinded by two-thirds vote of the full membership of the council. It takes 27 votes. And um, I think we've got, we got way more than 27 people in here. We're gonna try this by voice vote. Again, it's a motion to rescind. It's been properly seconded. All those in favor of the motion to rescind, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We have rescinded our actions on BL 2021-853 and 889. Those rescinded, the motion rescind passes on those two. Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized for a motion on both those bills. I would now like to uh, um, move that we reconsider this on February 1st public hearing. All right, so the motion is to uh, reconsider. Oh, no. uh, defer second reading and public hearing to the, to the February hmm. First, first, okay. first, second reading. Okay, so Council Member Van Race, we're going to give you the right language to okay. do it. Okay. So it should be a motion to defer second reading uh, to the February public hearing. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, a motion to rescind on second reading and uh, defer uh, the public hearing on so February. So you've already 1st. you've already rescinded. So right. this is just yeah, a set. Just these two bills. What she said. Yeah, yeah I'd like right. to do that. Yeah. This is just a motion to move this to the. I'm just trying first to protect the house, in February man. <laughs> yeah. uh, for second reading. Okay, that's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? We're just trying to get this back for public hearing in February. Any discussion on this one? All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. Thank you, um, Councilman Van Rees. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, next item. Make sure I don't miss anything. Number 85. That's the next one. Next one is actually item number 76. It's Bill 2021 999 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from CS to OR20 zoning. Property located 2106A through M 24th Avenue North, approximately 75 feet north of Clarksville Pike. It's 0.75 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Rutherford, uh, Planning and Zoning. Planning and Zoning voted uh, nine in favor, zero against on the substitute, and then nine in favor, zero against uh, on the bill as substituted. All right, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, I'd like to move the substitute. All right, so Council Member Toombs has moved a substitute ordinance on Bill 2021-999, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the substitute. The substitute adds the NS designation to prohibit short-term rentals. Okay, you've heard the explanation of the substitute. Uh, again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? All those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. Councilor Mertoums, you're on BL 2021-999 as substituted. Move for approval as substituted. All right, so Councilor Mertoums has moved for approval, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill on third reading? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on BL 2021-999 as substituted on third reading. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion passes. That bill is adopted as substituted on third reading. Uh, next item is item number 83, uh, BL 2021-1011 by Councilmember O'Connell. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 7.08 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to the sale of beer and beer permits, and Chapter 7.24 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to alcoholic beverage use restrictions. Council Member O'Connell, uh, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I've got a second substitute that I would like to try to get on there, but I will need to suspend the rules. I'd like to request a suspension of the rules, please. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has a second substitute, has to move for suspension of the rules. Council Member Vercher, Rules Committee, take this one up. All right, so I'm being told it was timely filed. It was act. timely filed, okay. Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilmember Vercher. So Councilmember O'Connell is moving to suspend the rules. 
to get the second substitute before this body tonight. Is there any objection uh, to suspension of the rules? Seeing no objection, rules are suspended. Councilmember McConnell, you're recognized on your second substitute. Thank you. I'd like to move the second substitute with a brief comment. Okay. So Councilmember O'Connell has moved the second substitute properly, seconded back to you. Thank you. I want to commend the uh, beer board members and staff for working with me diligently here. When we passed uh, BL 2021-911 a few months ago, uh, we knew we were pretty significantly altering the market for entertainment transportation vehicles. Uh, and that kind of swept up in that mix were pedal carriages who are already uh, regulated by the Transportation Licensing Commission. Um, I'm committed at that point to work pretty quickly to uh, take the next step in the regulatory scheme, which you know we've, we've got a multi-step process we're pursuing. This one establishes a new process whereby uh, these types of vehicles can access new permits that are revocable. Uh, so they basically will now have to pay a visit, visit to the beer board, whereas before uh, they didn't have to do anything. This second substitute specifically is the beer board working with both MNPD and the Transportation Licensing Commission and working very quickly um, as they've continued to get some feedback to make just a few more technical updates here uh, before we uh, apply this and, and create this new beer permit. So this, this includes a few definition changes uh, and some cleanup. There was one section that could potentially have been interpreted to allow brick and mortar people, uh, establishments to have uh, the opportunity to get a single permit covering both the fixed establishment as well as the mobile establishment. So I, I encourage colleagues to support this. This is technical changes recommended specifically by the Beer Board. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. You've heard the motion. It was properly seconded uh, on the second substitute. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on the second substitute. All those in favor of the second substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Second substitute's adopted. Council Member O'Connell, you're on your bill as substituted. Thank you. And just to, for the sake of clarification, I believe um, now, Ms. Zeitlin, this contains all of the, um, like we had previously, I think it was substitute amended, and now this inc incorporates with the second substitute all of the changes we have wanted to adopt all along the way. Is that correct? Correct. This combines that those su substitute changes, the amendment that was adopted to the substitute, and then adds new changes with that. Uh, second substitute. Great, thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to move the bill as substituted. All right, so Council Member O'Connell moves the bill for passage as substituted on third reading. Properly seconded. Discussion on the bill. Seeing none, ready to vote. We're voting on Bill 2021-1011 as substitute for passage on third and final reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill is adopted. All right, that takes us to the final bill, I believe, on the calendar tonight. Uh, it's Bill 2021-1016 by Councilmember Van Rees, Hurt, Mendes, Porterfield, and others. Ordinance naming the landing and steps in front of the historic Metropolitan Courthouse in honor of Diane Nash. Councilmember Van Rees, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is uh, one of those moments that, um, uh, I mean, I tell you, as a little kid, Diane Nash was a hero of mine. It's important to give flowers when you can. Um, I want to acknowledge Councilmember Hurt for her work with me with Metro Parks early on, for the months of advocacy in that regard, and to Mr. Mendez for finding always a way. Thank you so much. Um, as what happens a lot of the times, um, we get good ideas and we try to execute them. But sometimes it's important for us to put the mic down and have the people that it mainly affected have a few words. And uh, uh, our minority caucus chair, Delisha Porterfield, is unable to be here tonight. So she asked me um, to allow uh, Councilmember Swara to say a few words on behalf of the Minority Caucus and to to please move this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Swara. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, yes, I first want to acknowledge that Councilmember Porofi is not able to, to be here. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Van Rees, Councilmember Jorge Mendes uh, for pushing this through, as well as the Minority Caucus members and other uh, council members that are sponsors and all those that are voting in favor. Uh, like Councilmember Van Rees said, <laughs> Diane Nash is not just an hero as an African American, but she's also a woman. And when you look at the pictures of the civil rights movement, she's always there. And you see this feisty, intelligent, brilliant, beautiful woman right there with the guys and pushing through. Uh, I will not tell you her history. You need to read uh, the, the ordinance and to also look at her, her history and to see all that she's done. Diane Nash was responsible. She was co-founder of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And this incredible woman was also instrumental in uh, initiating the Alabama Voting Rights Project. A lot of things that made history, not just in Nashville, but across the United, Nation, United States. Uh, when you look at what we're talking about, the plaza that we're renaming, it's very, very uh, appropriate because this is where she actually confronted the mayor of Nashville. And so um, part of it wanted me to speak uh, because it's following the trend of how Nashville is finally recognizing all these trade blazers. We started with a bunch of street namings, um, City Vivian, uh, uh, Reverend Smith, uh, we did John Lewis Way, uh, which led to uh, somebody telling me that we also have an high school uh, named after Lawson that was thought of after the John Lewis Way events where Lawson attended. And so it's so great that now we're actually recognizing that uh, she's the female of the pack. Uh, many will tell you that naming streets, naming school, uh, doing ordinances does not solve all the problem that we have with, with inequity, it does not. But what it does is that we are saying thank you, we're finally recognizing them. But more than anything, I'm hoping that these street names, this name on buildings, this name on the plaza, will serve as a motivation for generations to come. That there was in time, in Nashville, where young students, individuals, had the courage to stand up for what they believe in. I'm gonna close before I move with a saying from Diane Nash that says, there is a source of power in each of us that we don't realize until we take responsibilities. I hope we all continue to remember this. I hope we all continue to take responsibility and continue to create a better space for all the people that are coming after us. With that, I'd like to uh, move for approval. <laughs> yes, if we could have all those uh, present uh, uh, voting in favor to be added to the uh, bill, that'd be great. All right, uh, Council Member Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this opportunity. I uh, personally want to thank uh, Councilmember Van Rees for introducing this resolution, and I thank the Minority Caucus who uh, approved for us to move forward uh, when it was first approved. And actually, I want to thank the Parks Board for uh, listening, and although we did not get what we wanted, they were still there for us, and Mr. Uh, our council member Mendez, who also came up with the solution. I strongly believe that Diane Nash is woefully the most uncelebrated of all the Freedom Riders. Undoubtedly, she was the most courageous, articulate, and determined. She was not the most popular, nor did she seek to be, but she was convicted with her eyes on the prize. She understood her role and she executed it flawlessly. She changed the city of Nashville forever and the impact she had is still strong as ever. Thus, our 50% women on this council, our woman director of Metro Parks, 57% of the parks board, Diane Nash, like most women, and especially those of color, never get the recognition they deserve. In spite of the sacrifices that they make in paving the road of leadership like Diane Nash did 60 years ago, and just think, she was a year or two from being a teenager. Hail to the queen. Thank you, Councilmember Hart.
Um, I believe that's it. Somewhere in the middle of all that discussion was a motion to approve this, resolu this bill. Uh, I'm going to give credit to Council Member Van Rees, a second to Council Member Suara, and a third to Council Member Hurt, even though we don't have thirds on this. Um, so um, the motion is to approve uh, Bill 2021-1016 on third and final reading. Anybody else in the queue? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those, oh, and without objection, everybody who votes in the affirmative will be listed as a sponsor. All those in favor of Bill 2021-1016 for passage on third and final reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The bill passes. Um, that's it for the calendar. Uh, before I do anything, I'm gonna uh, turn to Council Member Murphy. Uh, do we have a winner in the ugly sweater <laughs> contest? Council Member Murphy. I would like to proudly announce that Council Lady Allen is our winner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that was totally rigged. A second place goes to honorable mention would be another councilwoman. Just kidding. Councilman Zach Young. <laughs> so uh, I think we have a result. If there's any um, anybody who wants to appeal those decisions, if you will see. Um, Ms. Zeitland, she'll handle the appeals. Motion to reconsider. Uh, a motion to reconsider already. Um, I believe that's it. Um, everybody have a very, very safe and happy holiday. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion properly second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, we stand adjourned. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that was thing I did tonight, which was to name the courthouse steps in the plaza in front of this courthouse uh, for national civil rights icon Diane Nash. Uh, supporters had wanted to name the entire park in front of the courthouse for Nash, but the Parks Board did not allow that to happen because they have a long-standing policy not to name parks against living persons. Council members feel it's important to honor Nash while she is still living. They believe the courthouse steps in Plaza were appropriate to do this for Ms. Nash. In the early 60s, she got uh, then Mayor Ben West to admit it was wrong to segregate downtown lunch counters. Shortly after that, those lunch counters began to serve people of all colors. And in the several months of what turned out to be successful student sit-ins downtown had many lunch counters. Also, the council began tonight uh, with uh, the uh, invocation sung by the Fairfield Four. That's an African-American group that's now 100 years old in Nashville and now known across and around the world. Uh, they were uh, they were here tonight, a number of the members, and they sang for the group. Uh, it was a very touching moment. Um, it, the council had already passed a memorializing resolution in, uh, honoring the Fairfield Ford for their 100 years of, of, of singing. Uh, they were presented with that resolution tonight. They sang in committee, and they sang on the floor tonight to begin the meeting. When the council got into its actual agenda. They uh, had a couple of bills, um, or the large bills, on uh, to appropriate American Rescue uh, funds. Uh, one was uh, RS-2021-1260. It would allocate originally $20 million for affordable housing, uh, $10 million to go to the city's barn fund, $10 million to establish a catalyst uh, fund for affordable housing, and $200,000 to create a centralized database for affordable housing. But uh, with approval from the mayor and the uh, COVID-19 committee that looks over these requests, uh, that number was now doubled to $40 million. Uh, the resolution had 25 sponsors. It was passed uh, without, any, without one dissenting vote from Councilman Glover and one abstention uh, from uh, Councilman Swope. Uh, the, uh, the, the extra money will also go to the Barnes Fund to help them to uh, provide more affordable housing uh, opportunities, and they'll be putting those out to nonprofit groups across the all across Nashville to see what happens coming from that. Council also approved $9 million in rescue funds to expand the vehicle fleet for the Metro Nashville Police Department, the Sheriff's Department and Transportation, and the, the new Department of Transportation, and the Davidson County Sheriff's Office. Uh, there were some uh, questions and concerns about that. Uh, there are other ways for cities to buy those funds, to use those funds for vehicles. So some didn't think that this was a proper way to use American Rescue funds, but the council voted 25 to 8 with three abstentions uh, to do so. Council also um, approved uh, another request for $11 million to come from the city's 4% reserve fund. That was approved for equipment purchases for several city departments. Council also uh, deferred. Uh, request that, these, that the city and the, and the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee recommend $70 million be used to, to help uh, begin 
the economic development areas in disadvantaged communities, particularly with particular emphasis on Bordeaux and North Nashville. Uh, that's a large amount of money. The council wanted to defer that, so that will come back in the first meeting in January. Other noteworthy resolutions, they approved a, 12, a $5 million direct appropriation for the state for non-recurring uh, funding recovery expenses. This includes some home buyouts. They also approved another or accepted a $1 million grant from the state to demolish seven houses in various floodways and flood plains across the community. Two other resolutions would accept grants on serious health issues, $737,000 to improve local capacity to improve public health response to substance abuse epidemic. Uh, another $6 million to promote the proper use of all recommended vaccines and respond to vaccines, preventable diseases in collaboration with the CDC and other partners. Now, on first reading, the council tonight did approve the new uh, rezoning bill that the, for all 35 council districts and nine school board positions. This is done in light of the changes in our population where people live under the 2020 census. The council can only accept or reject what the planning commission has sent them. They cannot amend it. The Planning Commission has gone through three versions of this before they put in the bill, so they feel like at this point they may be in pretty good shape uh, to get it passed. If for some reason the council does not approve it, then that pr proposal from the Planning Commission goes on this, the, the ballot for the public to consider. The council could also add its own rezoning plan if it prefers to do that. Also, the council was, was supposed to take up tonight the, uh, on second reading again the use of license plate readers and scanners by Metro Police. This has been up a number of times. The council cannot come to a consensus about it. They deferred the bill now into, into the second meeting in January. Uh, there were a number of amendments about this bill tonight that were not, cons not considered because of the deferral. There also has been new opposition to the whole idea of having uh, license plate readers from the Community Oversight Board. They feel perhaps there's a lot of problems with potential uh, racial profiling that might come out of it. Council also uh, deferred a bill on a couple of bills I had tonight before about uh, tourists, the transportation vehicles downtown. One bill that would have uh, re restricted where they could operate in the downtown area and keep them away uh, within a certain several hundred feet from schools downtown. That bill was deferred for one for meetings to get again going into January. Also, a bill on third reading was finally approved tonight. This is the bill that Councilman Freddie O'Connell wanted to put in that would allow a BYB, bring your own beer, on some of these uh, downtown. Uh, Tourist, tourist vehicles. Uh, there was a bill, the bill that passed earlier to regulate them, completely denied their ability to have any liquor on there. That was creating a problem. Councilman said he tried to fix it. He got it, it, that new bill took effect, that new law took effect on December 1st, so it's been since that time, so they've been able to serve that. That's been a problem for some of the owners of the entertainment vehicles. They say they're losing businesses, which helped them move to go back in the right direction, although that won't take effect until Mayor Cooper signs the bill. And again, we told you again about the, the naming of the, of the steps on the courthouse uh, for Diane Nash. The council is now in recess. This is the last meeting of 2021. We'll next be in session on January 4th, 2022, the first Tuesday in the month of, in the, in the new year of 2022. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage. I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Thank meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.